What's up guys, it's your Motivational Gamer and welcome to another video. We had a huge contr contribution to um, the Giants from Scratch in 24 hours, the Giants 10 uh, challenge that we're doing and the Save the Children fundraiser and in return he asked to review his account. You guys are going to want to get out your pens and your papers and all that other stuff because uh, when we go over this account there's some key things that he asked me to review and kind of go over to kind of help him push him in the right direction that I feel a lot of you guys can learn from. So make sure you guys are ready to receive this information because it can catapult your account to another level when you understand the key concepts that I'm about to go over in this video. Um, so I was just playing with some, some compositions of his uh, because he specifically asked that I optimize his Giants team, uh, go over some stuff with his Dragons because he's trying to go into to speed runs, um, you know, some units that he wants to look at and build, and then uh, how to really kind of optimize his rune box. And we're going to cover all of those topics today. Now, before we do that, guys, we're going to get this rune, which I want to roll because if it gets a triple speed, it could be decent. Um... But before we do that, shout out to T1K, uh, four slash Hannibal. This is his account. He's the one that made the contribution. Um, and then he is T1K is part of T1G. And shouts out to Lucky 1313s, um, the leader of T1G, for creating a great atmosphere uh, to be a part of. Uh, and that's the, uh, the shout out that he wanted me to do for you guys. So if you guys are looking for a solid guild uh, to compete in uh, that creates that atmosphere, then definitely look no further than T1G or T1K. Boom, jump shot, money in the bank. Now, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, when I look at an account, the first thing that I look at is, A, what's going on in the team composition, okay? Uh, I want to know, uh, does he have the units? Uh, does he have, does the units that he does have have the skills that are required to get things done, okay? And uh, I guess not really get things done, but in, can they get things done that are desired to get done. Does that make sense? <laughs> and then from there, kind of make adjustments and, and go along. Now, um, the biggest thing before we like really get into specifics here, um, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of players make when they're trying to transition into faster runs is they try to build too many units too fast. Because like, the, you know, because, you know, we want like, Human beings, like, especially now, like, we want results instantly. We want instant gratification. So we'll look at a team comp, or we'll go look at a video, or we'll see a Reddit post, or we'll go see some shit, and it'll be like, yo! Y'all saw, y'all got that pink pony, though? Yo, that pink pony, Giants, 10 and 2.2 seconds is crazy! And then everybody wants to build a pink pony. And then with, when you start working on the pink pony, then the yellow pony comes out. And then the yellow pony is OP. And then you start building the yellow pony. And then somebody opens a bag of Skittles. And you be like, yo, these Skittles are delicious. And then you start to work on the Skittles, right? Um, but the biggest thing and the biggest, biggest, biggest piece of advice that I can give every single one of you, um, be, like I said, before we get into the details, is identify what team you want to work on, okay, first, for a long period of time. Minimum two weeks. <laughs> Minimum. Okay. Now, after you identify that team, Necro, TOA Normal, TOA Hard, Giants, Dragons, whatever. After you identify that team, especially after you've completed your core content, then work on that team. So, if you're working on TOA and you know you need despair runes, you should probably just be farming giants alone and nothing else. If you're working on necro because you want to speed up your necro team, then you should probably be farming dragons and nothing else. Does that make sense? Or if you need will runes for arena, you should probably be farming necro and nothing else. Um, and then by doing that, uh, it allows you to get that laser-like focus, which allows you to take huge strides towards your goal instead of just like you know eating Skittles, playing with the pink pony, playing with the yellow pony, not know what to do or just frustrating yourself when you're seeing no results, you know, after like spreading yourself so thin. Okay. So that's the big thing. So now let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing we're going to start with here is we're going to talk about, um, runes. Okay. Uh, we're going to get into the runes first. So you guys can kind of get this in your mind. And then from the runes, we're literally going to go into giants and then we're going to talk about dragons. Um, he asked me for guild battle, but I'm not the one to ask about guild battle. Trust me. You, you don't want my guild battle advice because I, I haven't guild battled in, like, ages. <laughs> okay, so I have no idea. Okay, know what? Psh, 10 TMG don't know shit about guild battle because he doesn't. All right? 
So let's talk about these runes here. So what happens is a lot of times players like they kind of come in and you start to stockpile. Hold on, let me restart my Dark Rift here. Um, but you start to stockpile, right? Because you don't know what units you want to build. You don't know what you want to do. So you just start to hold on runes. Uh, generally speaking, a prescription is if it's a speed rune, you should probably keep it. Uh, no matter what the subs are, just for now, especially if you end up needing it. Now for anything else, the question that I like to ask myself is every time I pull a rune, who can, A... Who could I use that on? So like, for instance, like if I see a rune like this and it's attack percent. Uh, um, nowadays, if it's a legend rune with a main set that I like, I, I'll typically keep maybe uh, just because of the new appraisal stone system. But previous, prior to the, uh, the, uh, the what's the name, the appraisal system, if I see a rune like this and I'm like, okay, attack plus 29% and I look at the subs, if... Three, if two to three uh, of the subsets don't match anything that I could absolutely build, I typically will sell it. So, like, if I say, okay, attack percent plus 29. So, I think, all right, if it has support subs, then I can probably put this on an attack base healer like Huawei or Miyang, the Water Sky Dancer, right? And that's how I know. If it's straight up damage subs, crit rate, crit damage, speed, you know, all that good jazz, then I can probably put it on a damage dealer. Now, if the substats are all over the freaking place, like flat death, resistance over here, speed over here, flat HP over here, crit damage as a sub, like, it's a super weird-ass rune. Now, could you reappraise this? Absolutely. And hope to get lucky? Absolutely. But for the most part, I mean, this is what I would call a shit rune. Like, yeah, it gives you the main stat, which is nice, so you can float if you really want to spend the mana to plus 15 this shit. Uh, but otherwise, like, this is, like... Again, prior to uh, appraisal stones, I, I would bounce this shit. But what I would do now with a legendary rune, not any other rune, I would plus this to 12 and I would just put it aside. Uh, especially if it's a, like a crit damage rune on slot 4 or a speed rune on slot 2 legend uh, and potentially any 6 star rune main stat that you need. Okay. Um, now other runes like this HP plus 4 speed plus nine and it's already plus nine means that this rune is a big old bag of ass and you could probably just sell this and not have not you know not have to worry about it but like i ask myself every time it's just like i look at the subs and what is this going to amount to here i'm like speed death crit damage i could put this on a death unit um that's building damage that i want to put on vio if i can't think of any unit that i want to build or if there's no unit in my current future that i want to build i'll probably just get rid of the rune um so that's kind of how i look at it again get the rune shop it are there subsets that i can use immediately or in a short immediate amount of time uh do the subsets match to the type of unit that i'm building um if there's no positive answer to any of those those questions you can bounce these runes out of here so and that's what that is now occasionally you'll run into runes like this that have high subsets but no place i mean you can basically just kind of save this one like this is a 15 percent hp 11 percent crit damage could go on a bruiser uh for raid or stuff like that uh but the the easiest way to do it guys is to really roll your runes like roll them to 9 or 12 so you get an idea of, of if they're worth keeping or not if you leave your runes at like plus six with like decent subs, chances are they'll always stay at the plus six, and before you know it, you'll have 5,000 runes in your box. So plus them to nine, plus them to 12. If there's no place that you want to put them, uh, or if they're just not like super OP runes, honestly, you could just clean up your box. Um, so that's the big thing there that you guys should really, really pay attention to. Um, so if you apply that through throughout all of your runes, um, it should make it a lot easier to really decide which ones to keep and which ones not to keep. Okay, so that's the big thing. And unfortunately, you will come to a point in the game uh, where every single rune you have in your box is a decent rune. Um, and normally, where you when you get to that point where everything is just decent, then it's time to get more picky. Then it's now it's, okay, um, do I have perfect subs? If I don't have perfect subs or if this rune is not an absolute upgrade to something that I absolutely need, then it's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but it, it just happens in phases. In the beginning, it's just about the numbers. As you progress, then it's about two or three subsets. Then it's about all of the subsets matching. And then it's about maximizing everything. Okay, So that's that's how that'll work. Now let's go ahead and talk about his, uh, his teams here. So we can kind of get in. Um, as we go in, the first thing we're going to look at is his Giants team. He said that his Giants team was Vero. Oh, uh, this is me messing around. Okay. Um, his 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 basic team is Vero, Theo, Bella, Shannon, Bernard. 
Okay, so this is his core team. Um, his fastest run time is like a minute 26, um, but he said he also uses Orochi, Ro Lucian, Sig, and Beth in various combos, okay? So the the easiest way, y'all, and this is going to help you guys out because we, we're going to teach everybody how to speed giants today, okay? Um, or transition into speed giants. The easiest way to do this is to look at a couple of things on your account, and you guys will always hear me say this because repetition is the, mother, is the mother of all skill. Shouts out to Tony Robbins. Um, but... If you have a beneficial effect remover, that's super key. Um, and then also the attack breaker. Uh, the thing with attack break and beneficial effect remover, if you have those two things, there's really nothing else you need in your team but damage. Um, at least as you transition into speed. When you talk about ultra speed runs where you deal so much damage that you don't, it doesn't really matter what the fuck you have, um, then you could just worry about how much damage you're dealing. Um, but as you transition, you'll go from safety to not so safe to just worrying about attack break beneficial effect removal and as much damage as you can and then as you get all the way in then it's just as much damage as you can does that make sense um so where is that now like he's kind of running a core team what i'm assuming is that um he he's like playing with all these units and he's trying to figure out what he's doing wrong because he wants to get his speed runs more consistent so the big thing here for all of you guys and you guys should take this into consideration is to take barrel out by Vero, because you absolutely do not need Vero or any type of cleanser if you're stripping and breaking attack efficiently as you transition. Like literally, I used, I took, I got rid of her, I didn't use her. I fed Shannon long ass time ago. Um, I used Megan, uh, Megan, uh, Bernard and Bella all the way until a minute and six. I mean, these three units right here are OP. Now, the key thing that I did notice on his Bernard is that his accuracy is only at 16%. If you guys are running the, the little, the trio here, the Wombo Combo, you guys need to make sure that your Bernard is at at least 45% accuracy. Same thing with your Bella. If your Bella's not at 45, well, Bella's good. Um, and then uh, Megan as well, 60%, perfect. And then once you're landing these three things, you literally can put anybody you want. You can you can run Lucian in here. You can run Sigmaris in here. Uh, you can if you want to get really cute. Uh, like once you start getting stuff like Galleon, uh, when you start wanting to transition into your super speed runs, uh, then you can do your Galleon and then throw a third damage dealer in and it'll look something like this. Because the biggest thing here then is to make sure that Bernard lands his attack break. But in order to muster something like this and really start getting into your faster runs, you want to make sure that your attack breaker, again, has the accuracy that he needs to apply the attack break to keep the rest of your team safe. Now this is the no healer composition and like I said, it's contingent on whether or not you land the attack break now once you, once your runes go through the roof through the roof then you can kind of start looking at losing the attack break but until then uh all of your success pretty much is going to be pivotal on your ability to land the attack break okay or deal as much damage in a certain uh in a certain window uh, that you can just clear everything out and now from this point like let's say we didn't go with the third uh we didn't go with galleon and we still wanted to keep things safe so we wanted to still run bella and still run run megan your job uh, when you guys are doing something like this is to ensure that your two damage dealers, whoever they are, uh, whether they're uh, Siggy as the HP lead for the extra survivability and then Beth here for the double uh, AoE, um, whoever they are is to make sure that they deal as much damage as possible. So like to get this crit rate up to like 60-70% or more, crit damage, you know, always on the climb. Uh, on all of your attack damage units crit rates good here and then to get the uh, the crit damage as high as you absolutely possibly can um, and that's the big thing um, when transitioning into speed now dragons is a little bit different okay um, not so much really uh, his core team for dragons is verde vero bella megan beth okay so verde verde vero beth Galleon. Oh, I don't know. Is that what he said? No. Uh, Verde, Vero, Bella, Megan. Bella, Megan, Beth. All right, for the damage. Oops. That could work, too. Okay, so this is, like, you know, kind of like a core kind of kind of dragon steam. Now, a couple of things are going to change here. Dragon speed is contingent on, A, obviously how fast you can clear the waves, how fast you can clear mid boss. Um, not mid boss is not as time consuming though in dragons as giants because giants is just annoying with the 
and golem, right? Uh, but in dragons, it's, it's quite a bit different. A lot of people rush here because they're like, oh, I need to build Spectra, right? Um, but there's a couple of ways that you can kind of go about speed dragons. Dragons is about keeping that beneficial effect off. Because in dragons, you have that small window before the first immunity where you deal as much damage as possible, okay? Um, naturally, attack bar reduction helps. And this is why a lot of people choose Spectra. Because if he's fast enough, um, then he'll come in. Uh, and with enough accuracy, which this is not enough, um, he'll come in, he'll reduce the attack bar and buy your team time. If Spectra does not reduce the attack bar uh, or misses, which Spectra will, because that's what Spectra does, um, then your team's success is contingent on whether or not you can remove that beneficial effect. Now, there's a couple of things that you can really, really look at here. Um, he's losing... A lot of damage with Vertihill. Some people ask if they should transition Vertihill to damage, which you absolutely can. Uh, I know a big thing right now is running Vertihill on Rage uh, or on a Violent Damage build. Uh, but the big thing is to make sure that you can do it. Now, once your Vertihill is fast enough or your team is running um, congruently, I should say, another thing you can do here is absolutely lose Veramos. Um, because the big thing is, is if your Spectra is landing efficiently and you're able to remove those beneficial effects, then how much damage you deal consistently is going to help determine how fast you can run your dungeon. So if you got Spectra reducing the enemy's attack bar, you have Vertihill dealing damage and increasing the enemy's attack bar, then the key thing that you guys are going to focus on is A, how much damage can you possibly deal? So, you know, again, the key thing here is to ensure that, like, A, getting her accuracy a little higher so she can ensure that she lands death break, and then making sure that her crit rate's higher, crit damage is higher, uh, attack power's on track. So, um, that's kind of the big thing when you guys are looking at really speeding up your run. So, I just wanted to talk about that, and I want to, now we'll, um, I'll show you guys what I mean by kind of taking this process in application here. So I'm going to take Bella out. We're going to try his team composition here uh, without a healer. Um, so we can run Galleon here, take Megan out, and then we're going to run all damage so I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and I'll show you guys. We'll run uh, Sigmaris here for the extra insurance for the attack break. Uh, but a lot of times... Like when players like clear, like they don't really understand why um, they're successful in the clear or not successful. Because uh, they'd be like, oh, this team worked. I'm going to try to run it again. And it's like, why is this not working? But it's like the little stuff that players overlook that's huge. One thing he is going to want to do, though, like when he looks at his account, is get his Lucian damage up. Lucian should literally be able to ant magic and basically clear a wave. Like your your wave clear should be like 3 to 8 seconds, uh, depending on, obviously, how your AI is going. Siggy is great for this wave. Um, so for those of you guys wondering, like, oh, should I fuse Siggy? Siggy is awesome for this wave because of the damage that he deals proportionate to the enemy's max HP. So we're getting close here. Uh, Lucian should ant magic here soon. Uh, sh come on, Lucian. Do our thing. Do it. Clear it. Clear the wave. There we go. Okay, and now we're at the boss. Now, the big thing here, and th and this is this is why this is so important, is you need him to land attack break, which he did. So now once that attack break is applied, whether the boss defense breaks you or not, it doesn't really matter because you have that attack break in place, which allows your attackers and stuff to stay alive. Um... And if you guys can notice, since the attack break is applied, the team is still surviving and doing its thing. And this is why it's so, 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 so important to do it. So we just set a new record for him uh, on his Giants B10 team uh, based on the principles that I've applied. So this is why it's so important, guys. And I'm telling you guys, a lot of you are like, Oh, you know, I, you know, I, I'm using this team. How do I speed it up? I got Shannon Bernard Bella or Megan Bernard Bella, and it's not going any faster. It's because you need to a check your Bernard's accuracy, check your Bella Megan's accuracy, and b increase the damage of your two damage dealers. Okay, and obviously take Veramos out. And this was just an example. So now that you guys have seen this in play, now we can kind of move on to the next section. <laughs> so now I talked to you guys about theory and practice. Now I showed you the theory and practice, and now you guys can go apply it. His last question that he really, really wanted to know was about potential units to build and really how to get his raid team together. So like when you're looking at your initial raid team, it's it's super simple. Like here, let me, uh, he's currently up to, we'll, we'll start at three here. Um, and we'll make a party. We'll make it private because I don't want to group with anybody. 
Okay. Actually, I could probably group it myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I won't do that. That'll, that'll just take too long. All right. So the first thing you're going to look at is there's a couple of things you're going to need for your rate. Um, you're going to need people in the front line, okay, and which can literally be any kind of tank type if you don't have vampire runes. If you have vamp runes, it opens up. But you're just going to kind of want to get a front line together with some kind of defense lead. Defense resistance or um, HP if you got it. Specifically not Veramos. So looking at his team, I mean, we can kind of run with Emma in the front. She's not going to lead though. Um, and he can run with Tess, I guess, for the resistance lead. Um, and then he can kind of, let's see, does he have a third? And he can run Chisun front if he beefs her up. So then he has all the heals. And then from there, it's just... Oops, my bad. And then from there, he can run Colleen in the back. I know he's got a Colleen. Okay. And then everything else is just damage. Now, so he has his heals. Well, he has just soon, though. So he doesn't really need Emma. Who else could he run in the front? Basalt? <laughs> uh, or he could run Delphoi. I'm just going to go over like all the units that he could run in the front. He can even run her if he wanted to. Okay. So oop, me and can go in the back. Me and Colleen could be heals and you could lose. Oh my God. He's got so much stuff. All right. So this is what we'll do. He doesn't really have a strong raid team yet, uh, but I'll talk to you guys more so about mechanics. So typically speaking, like I said, in the front, Resistance lead, defense lead, or HP percent lead is what you really want to start with when you're starting out your raid. If you guys don't have those, get DS today at noon when the dungeon comes out. Um, or uh, if you guys have uh, the time, fuse the fire panda um, to get the defense lead. Once you guys have those, you guys got two leaders that you can kind of choose from, but those are typically the leaders that you want to start from. And generally speaking, you want to have tanky units up front uh, with a lot of defense and a lot of HP. The more units you have up front in the front line, the less damage your units will take as a whole. So if you run a four front like this and a two back, um, then they'll split up more damage between the four and your front line will take less damage. If you're going to run a three front, then obviously they'll take more, two front, etc. They'll need to be even more tanky. Now, uh, later on, when you start getting vampire runes, then you can get away with more stuff because then your front line will start to heal itself and the stat requirements could be a little bit lower because you'll be able to deal more damage, etc., etc. But that's a topic for a different conversation. Right now, we're just trying to get them scored away. After you have your core leads, however you're going to set this up, um, I'm just going to pretend that your Chisun and your Basalt have 2k defense and they're just healing bosses. <laughs> then you're going to set up your back line, okay? Um, typically speaking, in your back line, you usually want to have something going on like in terms of a cleanser. So let's say you run a Konamiya back um, and let's say you run like Konamiya Miang for the cleanse or something like that. Um, and then Colleen for the recovery block. And then you just want to make sure that in your back line that you have enough damage. A, so that's when units that he asked about like, uh, where are we at? Stella is, oh my god, amazing for raid. Um, and you have all your units in the back line that can apply all of the negative effects that they need to apply. Those negative effects happen to be uh, attack break, defense break, attack speed reduction, recovery block specifically, especially if you're running buffs like Jasoon um, to keep the boss from healing. Um, and all of that other jazz. Branding is great, um, but any negative effect that you need to stack on your team to make sure your team works effectively. Um, but again, the initial recommendation that I received when I started Raid was two cleansers, one fast, one slow. Um, your frontline beefy, two, you know, up to 2k defense, up to as much HP as you can, uh, depending on how many you're running in the front. And then of course, um, two healers, specifically a main healer and an off healer like a Colleen and a Chisun. If you're not going to run Colleen and Chisun, you can get away with Colleen and Miyang and then just tank up your front line with whoever like the Fire Bank, but like the Fire Panda here, Dark Death Knight here, uh, and run a two front or you can run the Dark, uh, the Fire Panda, the Dark Death Knight and Basalt and then have a three front and then just take one of these out of the back. Uh, but it, it's pretty simple from there. But the big thing though is he mentioned about getting into R3, R4. Um, it's pretty simple. Matter of fact, you know what? I will. Um, here, let me invite myself here to Motivational G. And we'll do that. And invite. Boop. Invite sent. Let me uh, accept this. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to do some R3. 
Okay, let's get my team, and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. So my, my generic team right now, because, oh, well, my generic team was <laughs> Raviti, but now that I got the fire pen, I finally got him. Uh, it'll change. Actually, no, I'm going to take the fire pen out and put Darian. I'll put my generic team in, and then we'll run uh, Stella, Miang, Colleen. And who else was running in the back? Water KFG. Boom. Okay. And then uh, I'll also. Okay. So we got that. And then I'll ready up. Oh, shit. I was going to run a second team, but I, I can't, I guess, unless I create the party. That's stupid. All right. Public. Oh, he can do... Okay, that's fine. And we'll do it like this. So just to kind of show you guys what I mean. Uh, we'll get him... Uh, who's going to be in his front line? We'll run his... Theo. Or his test, my bad. Ah, oh, They don't want to party with us! <laughs> Alright, I'll start the party. Am I the leader? No, I don't. I don't want you. Okay, get out of here. Yes, private. No, I can't. I can't change it to private. Hold on a second. It's my first day, y'all. First day. We're gonna get this though. Seriously, I don't know how to make a star. Never mind. We can't do this because I don't know how to make a star. Damn it. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. Let me see if I if I can get him. Um, to uh, get in the party here. Alright. Join party. No. No. Yes! So. <laughs> now that's luck right there. That is luck. Alright. So. Now let's go ahead and put his team in here. So. He's going to run. Um. Again, he doesn't really have the units yet, so we're just going to run like a generic composition here. I hope his test is tanky, and we're just going to have to work this out. But uh, he wanted R3. R3 is not too bad. Okay, so he... No, test is not tanky enough to be front. Uh, we'll just run him in back for the resist, um, and then we'll throw Basalt in the front. Who else does he have that's a tank? We'll put his Colleen in the back, and then we'll do... Actually, what's his Colleen at, stat-wise? Nope, she's not tanky enough either. Uh, Konamiya for the cleanse. And is this Emma tanky? 207.3? Nope, you gotta, you gotta get your defense up, man. Defense up, and then Delphoi, what's, her, what's she at? 493? I mean, yeah. She's just gonna have to do for now. And then we'll get him some damage in here somewhere. It's a weird ass raid team. And we'll run. Okay, so he's got attack break. He's got the cleanse. He's got. We'll run. I guess we'll just run her. Estelle. I know Stella's not ready yet. Yeah. All right, we can do that. And then I'll run. Uh... For my second team, I'll run the Fire Panda. Fire Panda, Annabelle. And then we'll run. Lisa in the back. We'll run. Jamie. Uh, ran and okay and then I don't know I just need some generic damage at this point all right cool and then we'll lead okay bow all right so now you guys can kind of see this um so in terms of putting your rate team together like you still got a ways to go. Um, my personal recommendation is like you typically don't 
worry about it until you're able to do R4. Um, so you still have some other stuff that you're going to need to put together. So like um, your test needs more stats. You know, your, your front line is going to need more defense. And the rest of your team, like in terms of damage, you should be okay. You just need to make sure that uh, everything else is in place and you should be fine. You have all... You have most of the units that you will need to put a solid front line together, um, but you just need, like I said, you just need to meet the stat requirements, and then from there, um, everything else will be fine. So, like, from here, like, this is all you just need to watch here, because this is kind of like, I, I just kind of may do with what you have. Um, you can run Delphoi front, because you got Delphoi and Kona for your two cleansers. Uh, you, you have Basalt and Colleen for your two healers, even though I would iron this out, because you have Miang and you have Chasun. Um, so once you tank, you can tank out Chasun or run Chasun front and you could sit her there and you'll be fine. Um, or you could just kind of wait until you fuse the fire panda or you get Diaz on, well, in a couple, in what? In 12 minutes <laughs> or an hour and 12 minutes. So definitely focus on that. And then after you make the adjustments, uh, for your team, dude, you'll be fine. Uh, but you just have to get the stats. And that's something that you guys like that are watching this video ha really have to pay attention to is if you guys are worried about raid, raid is all about how the mechanics work on your team. Are you applying all the negative effects that you need to land? And um, what are your stats? If you're meeting the stat thresholds, depending on how many in the front you're running if um, and then you should be fine. And then also, if do you have the leadership skills that you need to make your teams effective? Does that make sense? So that's the big thing. And if you guys pay attention to that, I mean, you guys are set. And then that's pretty much it. I mean, we've got it all covered. I think I think we we hit it all. Let me uh, let me go over the email here and just make sure we got most of it. Um, that's it. We went over runes. We covered DB10, GB10. Uh, I said that you don't want me doing your guild battle stuff. <laughs> and then we talked about how to really clean up your inventory. Um, so that's the big thing there. Um, and and shouts out to um, to Scat Fetus on his interview that he did with uh, Childish Plays, where he had literally said that there's no um, there's no such thing as min maxing in this game, guys. Um, in this game, like you you got you pretty much have to have it all. You got to have pretty much a little bit of everything. So the big thing here is really starting out um, and and from a place where you understand uh, what stats you need and what specifically you want to work on and then work on that until it's where you want it to be and then move to something else. Um, the easy thing, guys, is to uh, split up and do so many different things and then when you spread yourself thin, you slow your, pro uh, your progression down exponentially, guys. So, if I leave one thing, you know, for you guys to take away from this, if you guys took nothing else from this video, <laughs> make sure that you guys, A, have laser-like focus, and once you have your sights set on something, focus on that thing until it's done. And if you guys do just that thing, um, you guys will have tremendous results in the game and be able to progress through all the content that you need to get through to get where you want to be. So, shouts out again to T1K Hannibal, even though you had a star in your name, so I couldn't invite you to the party because I have no idea how to write a star. But thank you guys again. Um, if you guys are looking to support the event, you guys can check out the link below in the video. We are almost at the $600 goal and then everything after that is going to save the children, y'all. Um, so again, thank you guys all for your tremendous support. Hannibal, thank you for this opportunity to review your account and thank you again for your tremendous donation and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.